So we're back after a break, again, but ready to start Season 3 with FC Vaduz and Liechtenstein. It's coming off the back of a season of surprise success in the Swiss League and a mammoth European run, we find ourselves with a decent transfer kitty and a bit of room to play with in the wage budget ahead of the new season. But there is one problem when it comes to the transfer market, and that is in the board culture which says they want me to sign Liechtensteiner players. We certainly have plenty of them in the squad, not to mention several coming up through the under-21 and under-18 youth ranks. But the board want me to sign more, even though most of them are crap. Speaking of Liechtensteiner players, last season's top scorer Tunahan Cicek now qualifies for Liechtensteiner nationality. And unfortunately sees no benefit to taking it up. I mean, who wouldn't want to make their international debut age 33 for one of Europe's microstates? But anyway, before we could really get busy in the transfer market, Europa League conference qualifying came around. First up, MSK Zilna of Slovakia, and a decent but could have been more 1-0 win at home, followed by a 2-2 draw away, which did get nervous for the final 10 minutes, but at least we made it. We were off to Ukraine in the next round for a 0-0 draw with Volska. But a win's a win, and we took 1-0 in the home leg. Next up would be Doxa Toy Katokopias of Cyprus, and, well, damn, that was a nasty surprise. So with a 2-0 deficit from the home leg, we would have to answer that age-old football cliché. Can we do it on a balmy late summer Thursday evening in Cyprus? To find out, we would need an early goal, and young Lichtensteiner startlet Lorenzo Kraus would oblige. Then adding a second before half-time to level the tie, his hat-trick was completed with 12 minutes to go, and we suddenly had the advantage. Tunahan Chichek would make sure of the great escape with a stoppage-time strike, rendering Doxa's late goal completely meaningless. What a great comeback that was, and fantastic to see our young Liechtensteiner star leading the way. So one more team to beat, one more team standing between us and the group stages for a second year in a row. Who would it be? Tottenham Hotspur. This, of course, would be a tall order with the likes of Harry Kane still there leading the line, Sun as well. But I think this deserves the live com treatment, so that's what we're going to do right now. And this is the team that we're going to attempt to beat Tottenham with. It's the home leg first. It's a very similar team to last season. No new signings in yet. So we've got Pizzini in goal. We've got Jamaji and Ishik in the centre of defence. Gasset and Martinez in the full-back positions. We've got Edu. Cristiano now a permanent signing, of course. And Pepsi as our central midfield trio. We've got Fabio Fair and Tunahan Cicek on the wings. Lorenzo Kraus. I hope he's going to get a goal today. That would really put him on the map. A goal against top-quality European opposition but let's submit the team get that conference league anthem playing all right here we go we've got the lineups out so we've already looked at the Vaduz lineup let's see what we're going to get from our opponents Tottenham Hotspur let's have a look at their team so we can see yep they've gone with Sun and Kane up top no surprises there it's going to be a big ask for us to get the victory over them here but i think we can do it the <laughs> roof of the rhine park stadium there slightly obscuring the europa conference league logo but no worries let's get this match underway leave a prediction down in the comments right now do you think we can beat tottenham yes or no what score line are you expecting over the two legs we've got our first highlight here and it looks like we're starting with a tottenham attack Gasser tried to get in there and break it down, but Spurs are coming at us. So let's see. Are we going to go behind early on? We are. Harry Kane scores inside seven minutes. He must feel like he's playing for England. All right, we've got Liechtenstein on the attack here. Fabio Fair, it's coming to the back post. Doing Hanchi check with the instant equaliser. 1-1. One, one. That is exactly what we needed from this FC Vaduz team. We are not going to get humiliated. At least I hope not. <laughs> that was a fantastic comeback. Look at that ball to Fair. Fair picks out Chichek. Absolutely beautiful football. Okay, halfway through the first half now, and we've kept Tottenham down to that one shot on target, which they scored from. We've had a second one on target ourselves, but it's been a very quiet first half. Happy to keep it that way. And we have kept it that way. There was a late flurry from Tottenham in terms of shots, but nothing highlight worthy. So we're definitely telling the boys that they're doing well. Keep it going. I'm not going to make any substitutions. Fingers crossed we can sneak another goal and take an advantage to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium in a week's time. Uh-oh, free kick here. Son sends it into the box. But is there a chance here for an FC Vaduz break? 
Possibly, but there's nobody out on that right side. Why did we play that ball out there? One of my players has picked up a knock as well, so we'll have to check that out soon. Good interception again. Good work from the defence, but again, the hasty clearance. We're just clearing it to nobody. That's something we'll have to look at. We've wasted a couple of chances for a counter-attack there, and then we've paid for it. Right, so we've got Fabio Fair, who we know can be a bit injury-prone, so I'm going to take him off. We'll put on Samuel in his place. Gabriel Ishik has also picked up a bit of a twinge, a groin strain possibly, so I'm going to drop Edu back into defence and put Brian Lopez on in that holding midfield position. Give us a bit more bite in there. Get out there and make a difference, boys. Hopefully those subs are going to bring us some magic in the final 15 minutes. All right, but no magic to be had. I mean... We, we matched them pretty well in the first half, and to lose 2-1 to Tottenham with Kane and Son on the score sheet for Spurs, it's not too bad. All right then, so before we get to the second leg, we have actually made some transfers in the week between matches. So, first of all, a permanent signing, we've got Rodrigo... Try that again. Rodrigo Holgado from Chile. We've signed him as an inverted winger, can play up front. We just need cover in that position. We can't rely on Lorenzo Kraus all season. We've got an injury at the moment, long-term injury to uh, Dobras. He's going to be out for another two months. He'd normally play on the left, so it provides us good cover there. And we've also got a youngster in on loan from Bayern, one of those lovely deals where we don't pay any fees. We don't pick up his wages at all, but he can play as a wing-back on the left. He can also play as a central defender so we'll look forward to bolstering our squad a little bit with him but obviously neither of those guys are eligible for this match because we registered this squad well before they were signed so this is our lineup for the second leg it's very similar to the previous game hopefully i mean I doubt we're going to win, but you never know. We might have a repeat of that fantastic victory away in Cyprus at Doxa in the previous round. Highly unlikely, but stranger things have happened in the world of football manager. All right, so here we go. We've got the massive stadium this time. Um, obviously, Tottenham, heavy favourites for this one. We'll just get straight into the kickoff. We get a proper view of the Europa Conference League logo this time. Uh, Lorenzo Kraus said he was feeling nervous before the game, but we got him pumped up and inspired. It's one of those easy team talks. Just say to the whole team, there's no pressure on us. Pump the key players up, and hopefully we get a result. All right, corner for us. We start here. If we can score here and level up the tie. Whoa, and we've done it. Manuel Suter scores. <laughs> Fantastic. Or just before the game, he was speaking to me. I was concerned that we'd signed Helgado, and what would that mean for his place in the team? Well, if that's what he's going to do, he's got absolutely nothing to worry about. Look at that. Oh, just fell for him beautifully. The tie is level 2-2. Oh, now we've got a Tottenham corner. We're coming up to the half-hour mark. Come on, boys, let's get this clear and launch a counter-attack. Tottenham, of course, they'll want to wrap this up in the 90 minutes. They don't want to be hanging on or under pressure. And there we go. Harry Kane again gets the goal to restore their advantage. And that's how it remains coming into half-time. But to be honest, I thought we would be dead and buried by this point, like half-time in the second leg. So we've got to say, yeah, I think we've got to go with... This this, keep working hard, keep going, just keep everything the same. We've scored once, we can do it again. If we can get a goal early in the second half and not concede one early in the second half, as it looks like we might be about to do, then it's game on. It's anybody's game. But oh, we're still in with a chance with less than 45 minutes to play in the tie. Harry Kane though, reduces that chance quite significantly. Oh, we had the dream start in this game. We dared to believe for a good 20 minutes that we could somehow pull this off. But it looks very unlikely now as we've got half an hour left and it's another Spurs highlight. We just can't get out of our half at the moment. Of course, now they just want to control the game, give themselves another goal to kind of put it beyond doubt. There we go for once. It was not Son or Kane scoring. It was instead Destiny. I'm sure there's a joke in there somewhere. But anyway, we're going to make some substitutions. Time to rotate things a bit. Uh, yeah, we've got a few people who are not performing very well. Although they are fired up by the feedback. So I'm going to bring on this guy, Burmester. He's one of our youth talents. And yeah, I'm getting good reports from him. Uh, he did progressed a lot last season in the uh, under-21 team, so we've brought him up. Uh, we'll bring on Pepsi as well for a bit of refreshment and see if that 
back and get us back in this. I mean, obviously, we've got to score three goals now, which makes it very unlikely that we're going to progress. Yeah, and we're into stoppage time. Tottenham have just sat back. They just want to see this game out. And that's it. Our European run for this season over much, much earlier than last season. But, you know, you did yourselves proud today. They've all switched off from that. Deary me. Never mind, I should have shouted at them instead. Remember that for next time. Shout at them when they've lost to an established Premier League team. But unfortunately, that means we don't get the European run. That does mean, though, we can get through this season much faster. We're only going to have the Swiss Super League. Then we're going to have, hopefully, the Championship Group and not the Relegation Group and the Liechtensteiner Cup. So when I come back for the next episode, we are going to be catching up on the Liechtenstein national team who have got the nations league coming up so that's going to be our next episode make sure you join me for that one